Good morning, everyone, and welcome on another Sunday to Coastal Connections with Courtney. Here we are in Gulfport, Mississippi, located upstairs at the Rackhouse Steaks and Spirits. Today, we get the honor to meet with the president of Gulf Coast Restaurant Group, Mr. Bob Taylor. Welcome on another Sunday to Coastal Connections with Courtney. We are so excited. We sit here in downtown Gulfport, Mississippi at the Rack House. We get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the president of the Gulf Coast Restaurant Group and the founder, Mr. Bob Taylor. So Mr. Bob, I would like to talk to you and you know, you have made so many contributions to the development to the growth, to the tourism and the economy right here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. But I know you started at a very young age, actually 16 years old. And I would like to start there as we begin your story. Well, I was 16 living in Germantown, Tennessee and got a job at a place called the Moonraker, which is a upscale seafood and steak restaurant. and. Mm -hmm started bussing tables and got a promotion to washing dishes. That was a promotion back then. At 16 <laughs> years old. Yeah. And then I ended up being a first cook and a line cook and then, you know, ended up graduating high school and going off to Knoxville, Tennessee. So you went to Knoxville, Tennessee and you got a degree. What was your degree a at that time? General business degree. And you had already began your career in the restaurant industry and starting to feel things out. Yeah, when I, uh, about my junior year, I got a job with Ruby Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was the first Ruby Tuesdays they ever built. It was um, built in 1972, but I didn't start working until 1980. And um, when I graduated from high school, they offered me a job in management. So I took that. And I do want to touch on, you were the youngest person. It was 26 years old and you were actually promoted to that, the youngest person in that industry. Well, all right, so when I graduated college, went to work with Ruby Tuesdays, um, you know, I had to go through the, mm -hmm. you know, assistant manager, general manager, and then area director. And I was, at the time, I probably still the youngest area director there and I believe I was 26 years old when I got that promotion. Well Bob, would you ever dream that you'd be sitting here and you had opened at this point 14 half shells? Not really, no. <laughs> well tell me about that and how you've actually, I know you had visions, you've been a go-getter, you're one of the mover and the shakers that actually make it happen, but you've started way back and you've had a lot of adversaries to get to us sitting mm -hmm. here at the Rack House. Well, when you know, I, I was running the Outback Steakhouse okay. since 1994, and then Katrina came, and you know everybody knows what happened there. Mm. Blew everything away. Blew the half. Sh the uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> blew the uh, the Outback Steakhouse away. Blew the house away that I was living in, right. and um, so um, a guy named Mitch Salome asked me if I wanted to open up a little restaurant over there in Hardy Court Center. Mm -hmm. It was a McAllister's Deli. And I said, and he said, I'll help you. You know, at the time I, I wasn't worth any money. I had a negative net worth. Um, the storm just blew out, you know, no insurance. And so he offered to pay a little bit toward the build out and ended up opening up a place called the High Cotton Grill. I remember that, yeah. the High Cotton Grill. Back in 2006. 
Well, I'll tell you, you know, as I've talked to people, you were very known. Before Katrina, Outback was the place to go. I mean, that's where families went. You worked every table. You developed a name for yourself all over the coast. And then all of a sudden, it just, Katrina just took it from you. Well, how did you get through that? And what was that like? <clears throat> just perseverance. And, you know, I, I hired my first partner, Rob Hefner. Mm -hmm. uh, he helped me open up the, uh, the high cotton grill. And um, him and I basically worked that and for a while and then opened up the second one in D'Iberville. And, uh, and then <laughs> about a year or so later, an opportunity came to uh, take over the food for the jail. And so at that point, I brought on my second partner, Kevin Fish, mm -hmm. and he helped kind of get through that part of it while Rob and I were still kind of managing the, the, uh, the high cotton grill. And then an idea came to me about um, a restaurant in downtown Gulfport because at the time they were trying to re redevelop downtown and they had these facade grants working but there was no business right. down there. And so, you know, looked around, found a great place that first half shell that we opened in 2009 and then we opened up a actually a bar right next to it called the quarter where we had live music and eventually that kind of you know fell off to the side and we decided we needed more restaurant space so we shut it down and then combined those two spaces together for the for the half shell in Gulfport. Well, I know you're proud of it. I love the, um, and I think a lot of it's because you're from Tennessee and you've been, you've been all over. I mean, you're very broad and um, educated on all the different places. And I feel like the half shell gives you that vibe, the light, the French Quarter vibe, and you've brought that to the coast. Well, one of the things that, you know, that was lacking here on the coast, and in my opinion at the time, <coughs> was an oyster restaurant. Yes. There was, everybody loved oysters, but I don't believe there was one restaurant that specialized in oysters. So I felt that there was a, a niche that wasn't being filled. So that's, that's where that idea came up with. And then to create the recipes, we all got together, me and Rob and Kevin, and um, we started putting all these dishes together and we would have neighbors and friends come over and sit at this big table and would start pushing out all this food and diff cook different ways. And, you know, they had little index cards and they'd write their notes down on yeah. if they liked it or on not. Which one? And so we just kept, that's how we created the menu. We just kept doing that and doing that. Then we came up with our core menu and that's when we opened up over And it's there. consistent, correct, <coughs> throughout all the 14 half shells there are? They're all the same menu except for the ha the one in the Hard Rock has sushi. They yep. asked us to keep the sushi over there. But every other, all the menus are the same. And we still have probably 50% or more of our core menu that we started with from day one. And our menu evolves a lot. When we run m monthly specials every month, if we get you know, a home run on one of those things, mm -hmm. it basically goes to the menu. So we'll just say, okay, what's selling less? We're gonna take it off and we're gonna add this monthly special to it. And that's how we keep revolving the menu around. A lot of our most famous dishes we have come out with were monthly specials that Rob creates. That is so interesting because I know all about what you've brought to the coast and your different restaurants, what an entrepreneur you are. I had no idea that you were in the making of the recipes that, yeah. I mean, how show is consistent. If you want, if you are a regular or you're visiting, we're known for oysters now. It was not always that way. No, there's a lot of oyster restaurants out nowadays. But I wanted to touch on that because a lot of them come and go. Half Shell has not, it's actually expanded and grown. Yeah. Tell me about those oysters that are distinguished <coughs> that are succeeding. Well, one, th one thing you mentioned was consistency. And that's something that we pride ourselves in. And probably the biggest compliment that I get from mm. people that I know and the reason they come to our restaurants is because it's it's consistent yes. you know when somebody makes a decision to go to a restaurant you know a lot of times they're not going to choose that p place it may be good one day 
and bad the other. But if you're good every day, you know, we make our mistakes just like anybody else. And we pride ourselves in owning up to those mistakes and making the customer happy before they leave. But, you know, I think that the, the consistency is a big, a big piece of that. Our prices are, are, you know, we feel they're very fair. We don't tend to raise our prices as much as other places do when, right. when food costs You know what up. to expect. It exactly. has a reputation and it sticks to it. Yeah. And then, you know, when we started building more restaurants, I added another guy that worked with Ruby Tuesdays with me back in the 80s named Brian Raspberry. Okay. And so at that point, we had all of the, you know, the upper echelon of the company built. So now we have all of that knowledge working together. Then we started expanding, you know, and everybody has their own, you know, Rob's the foodie, you know, Brian builds the restaurants and maintains them. Kevin's, you know, front of the house guy and, and does a lot with insurance and stuff like that, finances. So we all have our own niche within the company that, you know, that we take care of. So as you started expanding and, you know, growing with success, is that when you decided to become the president and founder of the restaurant group? Well, we, we created, you know, it just started out the first half shell was basically uh, its own LLC, okay. but then we start, we opened the second half shell in Biloxi. That's when we created Gulf Coast Restaurant Group as okay. a name. So after that, all the restaurants are owned by, you know, the parent company, Gulf Coast Restaurant Group. And we also have the Rack House. We also have a food distribution company that provides food for all of our restaurants. A guy yes. named uh, my good friend Mark McQueen runs that company for us. So. And we sit at the, we sit here in the Rack House. So many people come here. The vibes are so awesome. It's the brick, it's the decor. You know, it's, it's the sister restaurant you developed after the success of Half Shell, is that right? Which one? Rack House. Oh, the Rack House, That yeah. is a good comment, <laughs> which one? Exactly, yeah. we're gonna touch on all of that. Yeah, so we all grew up in the steak business, basically. Mm -hmm. Myself, Rob, Kevin, and Brian. We all had previous steak experience, whether we were area directors or proprietors for steakhouses. And so, you know, as a, you know, as another growth, you know, venture, we thought that maybe doing a steakhouse would be a good idea. Now this building came up, came open and, you know, it's right near the half shell and mm -hmm. we just sure didn't want another restaurant to come over here so it came to the perfect time for us to yes. you know develop this new concept that we've got and hopefully it worked it start you know we started out pretty slow you know just like we did at the half shell i mean i remember our first few weeks of the half shell we were actually adding money to the servers so they could make tips it was that slow but then but then as we grew and our reputation grew um people we just got busier and you know, here we are. I love that. And, you know, we're going to have to go into a break, but one of the things about you and the Mississippi Gulf Coast, we're always resilient, but people like you keep the momentum going. We're now expanding in downtown Gulfport and it's restaurants and your different entities that are allowing that to happen. So we're going to take a quick break and we have a lot to touch on when we get back, but we are going to take a break and we will be right back. famous dance crew, the Jabberwockies, is coming to Bull Rivage this summer with their newest show, Timeless. Visit BullRivage.com for tickets and VIP packages. Thank you for calling J. Allen Toyota Service. This is what happens when you set an appointment at J. Allen Toyota Service. We will order the part right then so it'll be here when your appointment comes. Our greeter staff will greet you quickly and friendly and top off your fluids before your car even leaves the drive. Then your car will go to one of our six two-man express teams or one of our 10 certified technicians so they can get you back on the road safely and quickly. This is service the way it should be at J. Allen Toyota Service.
Thank you, South Mississippi, for making us your number one Ford dealer on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. 39 years strong of quality sales, service, and parts. Don't forget, we'll beat your best deal regardless. Visit the Gulf Coast's newest casino. Come in today and experience the beautiful, smoke-free Beachview Casino. Pick your game. We have your favorite slots and table games and a sports book. Enjoy incredible views while you dine at one of our many restaurants. And grab a drink while you enjoy live entertainment every weekend in the heart of the action. The Gulf Coast's newest, the smoke-free Beachview Casino Resort, Gulfport. Are a beacon of healing, resolute and consistent, determined. We are problem solvers, driven to overcoming obstacles, unshakable. We are prepared, capable, experienced, unbeatable. We are a network of people providing care throughout your lifetime. We are believers in the healing power of compassion. We are Memorial. Well, Bob, have you added a lot of people as these groups have grown with the infrastructure, the people, the tourism? We hire, we have about over a thousand people that work for us um, throughout the restaurants. And we have a great support system at the home office. You know, we've got, you know, accountants and marketing people and training people and, you know, insurance. Um, food techs, um, you know. Our office is managed by Barb Duvall, who's the heartbeat of the operations of Gulf Coast Restaurant Group. She has been here since day one, and I honestly do not know what I would do without her. We have all these people that support operations. You know, operations can't run itself without the support that we get from the wonderful people that work with us at the home office. Um, and uh, you know, also a big support is our, our food distribution company. It's a big company. And where and is that it's, located? It's, it's on Seaway. It's called okay. Coast Food Distributors. And uh, we're looking to do some extra things with that. But right, right now they're in charge of our commissary. You know, we make certain items that you eat every day when you go to the half shell. We make them at our commissary. And we, we have about I want to say four to five trucks, big trucks that go out to the restaurants twice a week and deliver all our food products to them. So uh, all that comes from our food distribution company. And the only thing we buy locally, aside from that, would be produce in the local markets. And where do you, I want to touch on this one more time because it's so well known, where do the oysters come? Because I know that they're so fresh. It only, I mean, people come here strictly whether you live here, you're a local, or you're visiting, <coughs> or you're moving here, Half Shell immediately becomes one of your favorite go-tos. So we probably go through about six million oysters a year right now. And I would say 85% of those come directly out of Louisiana. Um, the other 10 or 15% um, are gonna come out of Texas when their beds are open. Um, we've had a lot of uh, issues in the past, I'm sure you're aware of, where uh, it wasn't environmentally safe to get oysters either from Mississippi or from Louisiana or from Texas. So we've plenty of times had to rely on the East Coast market to get oysters. They cost more, the transportation to get them here costs more, their shelf life is less since you know you have that transportation time back and forth. Um, but we love Louisiana oysters. We try to get into the oyster production and growing business ourselves. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a company called Deer Island Oysters, uh, but we just had issues with the spillway, mm -hmm. you know, pushing all that fresh water into the sound. It was killing our oysters. You know, you've got other environmental things like hurricanes, um, you know, any sort of, you know, 
runoff with sewers or anything that would just shut down the beds. And so it really wasn't economically feasible for us to keep that. We wanted to scale it up and be able to produce, you know, three or four million oysters out of that, but it just, it wasn't worth it. Now there's a lot of great people that are doing that in those spots over there off Deer Island and they're producing some good oysters. And it's working for them. Yeah, it is working for them. Um, and we've bought some oysters from them, but it, just for us, it just, too much, you know, too much of a yeah. headache for us. Well, you know, being the president and the founder of the Gulf Coast Restaurant Group, you know, there's so much going on. You have to be a risk taker. You have to be, I mean, you not just anybody can make what ha what has happened here as you have. And, you know, a lot of buzz is going on that Bob Taylor has a little something to do with the old Sal Mookie. Yes, and yes. People get excited when they yeah, know you're we, involved. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. I mean, that would give us, <laughs> yeah. it would give us three restaurants within a 200-yard yes. area when you include the Half Shell and the Hard Rock. So, um, sure, it's a great location. Um, we are going to develop a new concept. It's not going to be a rack house or a half mm -hmm. shell. Um, it'll be something different. I will, without going into details, which we still don't know all the details, it will be steak and seafood. Um, and, and it's located in downtown Biloxi. Yep. Half shell's right around the corner. So yep. it's going to be another sister restaurant. Right. We won't sell oysters. Yeah. It'll be more have, like steak. Yeah, we'll have great steaks and great seafood cooked in a lot of different ways. And you know, that's what sells down here is steak and seafood and, Absolutely. and other things. But we're going to have to put a lot of money into that building. There's a lot of structural damage um, to that building that we're having to get in and repair. And um, so, you know, it's probably it's going to be several months before, you know, I mean, it could be toward the end of the year before we open. We but wanna, you feel good about You're very optimistic when you go into the project expecting success. Yeah, you have to expect success right. or else you're not going to do it. But a lot of times you don't get success. You know, sometimes you get into a market that you think is going to be a good market, mm -hmm. but then two or three year, years down the road, it turns out to be a not a good market. It turned out maybe that you think that your product is going to sell in a certain market, but, you know, maybe people don't like chain-type restaurants, so they'd rather go to their you know, mom and pops over there, which is completely understandable. You know, when your name comes up, you do so many catering for so many nonprofits. So many people don't even know that you're involved <clears throat> and you very rarely say no. You must really love the Gulf Coast community. We keep a pretty low profile when I it know. comes to that. You know, I'm not really one to get into the news or anything like that. Um, but, you know, and there are a lot of great, great other restaurants around the coast that do great with the community. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that has been embedded in my brain for a long time. I was taught that growing up, and especially with Outback Steakhouse, that's where it kind of got started with the community, with, you know, sponsoring a lot of schools and charities and stuff like that. So, you know, you train your staff to, to have that same philosophy and, you yeah. know, the giving mentality is something that, you know, spreads. With all that said, you started out, you know, it's a pretty inspiring story, washing dishes, bussing tables at 16 years old. You sit here, huge, huge contributions to Mississippi Gulf Coast at 63 years old. Tell me what Bob Taylor does now. I know you travel and you just married a beautiful wife and I'd love to hear about that. Well Pam came into my life about five years ago and Aww. we have just hit it off ever since and we love life together and she's been a, a great support mm -hmm. system for me. Um, you know she's got we've got two wonderful boys that are her boys and I've got my son and we have a grandbaby and we have another one on the way and you know that family support is important. So, but, and Bob, this chapter, is, is it a totally different journey than this fast pace and well, traveling? I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story, actually. I still, look, I still am involved with the restaurant. I am You're semi, still going in the yeah, backside. Yeah, I'm semi-retired, and, you know, I, I get involved in the big decisions. Um, we hired a guy named Dino Mirando as our director of operations, 
I've known Dino for a long, long time. And uh, he basically, you know, you've got myself and my partners up here, and then you've got Dino. And Dino handles all the operations. He, we've got three area directors that each have five or six restaurants. So the structure that we have in the company, you know, we've get, got a lot of steps in it, and we've got a lot of very, you know, experienced people, you know, working with us and maintaining the consistency and the quality that we're talking about. I mean, you've got to really be good with balancing and taking care of yourself to have this beautiful family life as well as keep all these things growing and you're constantly developing. How do you manage that? You know, again, it's the people that we work yeah, with. Yeah, it's your team. You know, it's our team. I was just, uh, I drove with Brian uh, last week, a couple of weeks ago through Birmingham and we stopped in Meridian looking at sites and, you know, I think we're going to probably put one in Meridian um, soon if we can get a deal worked out. We like the Coleman, Alabama location. That might work out too. But, you know, we're looking in, you know, other areas like Huntsville and Montgomery. And, you know, we'd like to fill up the Alabama, Mississippi, you know, market, you know, get as much as we can in those cities before we move out to Tennessee and you know, Georgia and stuff like that. Well, Bob, do you and your family, do y'all live on the Mississippi Gulf Coast? Because you're so involved and you love it so much. Yeah, we, I feel your passion. We're here, you know, we're here, um, you know, a few months out of the year. You know, we're blessed to have a house in Belize and in Colorado. So we spend time there, um, you know, getting yeah. out and enjoying life. So it's just pretty cool to have, you're so well rounded and diverse and yeah. it's been an honor to actually have you on my show and not only that kind of get to know you the real yeah. Bob Taylor and how this all started you've created an empire well it, you know anybody that's listening to this and you're growing up in the industry yeah um, you know the sky's the limit it's all based on how hard you work how good your work ethic is ethic is excuse me yeah um and your motivation and you know do you, and drive you know there's no nothing stopping anybody from from accomplishing what i'm doing or what anybody that's successful is doing yeah. you know well i'll tell you you know i feel like i'm gonna cry this has been so amazing opportunity for people to get to know you because you are very under the radar you're very humble you don't like any recognition and if your name comes up, you're just very respected. I've never heard a bad thing. You don't know, a str there aren't any strangers in your life and you treat everybody equal. And it's just been a pleasure. Well, and thank you, thank Mr. You, Bob. I look forward to seeing all the other developments. Oh, good. Thanks for having me. Oh, I appreciate you. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in on another Sunday to Coastal Connections with Courtney.